Um, let me ask you um, at least two questions. Um, this week's Economist had on the front page Jeremy Corbyn taking the Labour Party back to the 60s, going backwards, comrades, which is, of course, not really fair, because which political leader is talking about quantitative assessment in the 60s? I don't think anyone did in the 60s. But Jeremy Corbyn did. He says, we, what we need is QE for the peoples and not for banks. Well, this is an interesting idea, thing, because it's also interesting, because some economists tend to agree with him. Oh, that's interesting. That makes it even more interesting. And even, I think, in this parliament, there has been some ideas. Couldn't the, bank, the ECB not finance at least some of the investment in FC? Um, like I said, some economists tend to agree with him. I also saw this week Willem Buiter, who says, well, if the Citibank is projecting, we're going to the global recession, and what we need now is helicopter money, not, a peop not the same as a QE for people, but we need a helicopter money not only in the Euro and in the UK, but also in the US and in China. Um, now, there you go, because there is some... You, I'm happy that you go into the efficiency of uh, the asset purchase program, of your QE program, that it lowers interest rates. But there's still some criticisms from economists and non-economists on, the, on the, the efficiency of your program. And I would very much like to hear what your program, if I may say so, also contributes to, let's say, investments by SMEs and other firms. Thank you very much. Well, the answer to your last point is yes, the program is effective, and uh, we will see more and more so of it. Uh, we see now, as I said, credit recovering. We see the growth rates uh, in some of the stressed countries have been revised upward for the first time in uh, I don't know how many years. But especially uh, very, quite comforting are the developments of the credit market, which means that the, the, there is new lending taking place. Because now, talking about net flows here, namely it's gross flows less the, uh, this, the um, uh, coming to, to the end of past loans. So uh, it, this process is more gradual. Uh, but it's there. It's gradual, but it's there. It's gradual because in many situations, there are still bad loans which are weighing on the bank's balance sheets and make the um, renewed lending more, more difficult. But it's there. So we are, let me also add, that there are interesting episodes here that show the efficiency, the effectiveness of our, of our program. For example, the Teltro program has now reached 387 billion euros. And we have evidence that uh, the ones that most that accessed most this program are also the ones that lent more and lent more to the SMEs, are also the ones where the interest rates, the lending rates, went down most. So there are there are interesting correlations between uh, our our programs and their and their effectiveness. Now. Um, Second consideration is, you know, I mean, for hundreds of years, central banks have injected money in the economy through either banks and or markets. That's what we know. And uh, so we will uh, we'll, we'll certainly, uh, certainly consider these ideas are being discussed. They're being discussed everywhere, and the ECB is part of these discussions in academic fora and in other, in other cir circumstances. We should also not underestimate some the legal aspects that would apply to the euro area and to the ECB. So one should ask the question whether this uh, helicopter money is consistent with the treaties and so on. But I'm, I'm just saying this as a, um, not as um, a way to prejudge uh, the decision making one way or another. Uh, the, but the gravity of the challenges right now basically uh, would demand that we use uh, all available instruments within our common knowledge. And that's what we know now. Thank you.